Welcome outside to Let's Stadium, everybody. My name is Mike Petralia, joined this time by Patriots contributor and writer for WEEI.com, Ryan Hannibal. Ryan, uh, the big news of the day was Ryan Lindley was signed by the Patriots, while Matt Flynn, we hardly knew ye, uh, apparently a bad hamstring, he was let go by the Patriots. Bill Belichick speaking in his press conference here on Monday afternoon saying, we have to move forward, the train is moving, and unfortunately, uh, Matt Flynn could not get on the field. Ryan Lindley did here on Monday, took a few snaps towards the end of practice. What did you see? Uh, he was 4 of 10, I think I tracked him as, with an interception. I mean, it, it was his first reps in a while, so you can't expect perfection. He probably just got here today. But he was just another body in camp. I mean, you can't have Brady and Garoppolo taking all the snaps, especially with a game coming up on Thursday. He'll probably see some limited time. But I think the Lindley signing was just more of a, a healthy guy in camp and you know, to take the not the, the full load on those other two guys. I think that's a, a great point, Ryan, because, look, you know, we don't think that Tom Brady is going to play much, if at all, on Thursday night. Uh, certainly with a lot of uh, interchangeable parts working on the offensive line. Obviously, the Patriots are working two rookies in the middle of their uh, offensive line around uh, second-year center Brian Stork, who again missed practice here on um, uh, Monday afternoon. So there's a lot of question marks, so that would tend to lead me to believe and lead a lot of people to believe that the Patriots will not take the risk of playing Tom Brady on Thursday night. What can we expect to see from Jimmy Garoppolo, who again looked pretty uneven. He spent about 20-25 minutes on the back end of the field here just by himself with the offensive coordinator Josh McDaniels. Well, in 11 on 11s, his numbers weren't bad. They were 11 for 14, but he had his inter incompletions were pretty bad. And then just the whole camp, he hasn't really been as sharp as we would like to see him out here. I mean, he's in, only in his second year. We can't, tend to forget, but mm -hmm. I mean, we'll see what happens on Thursday night. I think we'll get a lot of playing time, like you said, um, and we'll see how he looks in game action. But what we've seen so far of him hasn't really been someone you'd feel comfortable with playing. Well, that's just the whole thing, Ryan. It's uneven, and it's really hard to judge Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he did throw a touchdown pass last year in the Monday night game, the disaster, the blowout against the Kansas City Chiefs. It's really hard to get a read on what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to look like when the ball is alive. Yeah, that's true. It's a totally different ball game when you're out on the field against another team compared to your guys who are throwing it in 11 on 11. I mean, I will say, I think last year around this time, he's too. And he looked much better than he did at the beginning. So we'll see if that comes, you know, maybe Thursday night or down the road. But like you said, right now, you don't really feel comfortable. A couple of players uh, reappeared here on uh, Monday afternoon. Of note, defensive tackle Alan Branch finally passed his physical and finally was cleared to be good enough to come out here in full pads on Monday and participate along the defensive line. Brian Timms, though, he was in a red jersey. He did. He also returned. And Matthew Slater, also in a red uh, jersey, he told us it was frustrating being in a red jersey because that means you can't do contact, and contact is kind of essential when you're talking about preparing for special teams. But in terms of having, having Allen Branch back out there, I think that's a big deal. Yeah, definitely. When you look at the defensive line with the uh, sort of the young guys they have with the loss of Vince Wilfork, Branch is sort of in a, a leadership role this year. I think with the younger guys, we sort of look to a guy like Allen Branch, and having him not in the field doesn't really send a good message to those younger guys and doesn't help the team in general. You want to have your guys 100%, especially when you're sort of rebuilding with the loss of Vince Wilfork. So I think definitely a good sign to have him back, and I think that will improve but just to have the cohesiveness with all defensive line together. We were talking with colleague Chris Price about this, and it's Tom Brady in the deep ball. Should the fans be concerned about Brady's ability or lack thereof to throw the ball deep? We did see a really nice deep ball from Tom Brady to Josh Boyce uh, midway through uh, practice today in 11-on-11s. In but from what you've seen, and you've been at many of these practices so far this summer, the deep ball, would you have concern that the Patriots are not making it enough of a priority? I think talking to Chris, about, to Chris about this even in last week, it's just not what the Patriots are, are built to do. I mean, you have these guys, the receivers like the Julian Edelmans, the Danny Amendolas, the Robert Kelseys, they're not built to sort of catch the deep balls. But then you look at you know Brian Timms, Aaron Domson, and Josh Boyce today, those guys are. So maybe with their emergence, we'll see a better result in Brady's deep ball. But I mean, from what we've seen of his deep ball and the very few throws, they haven't really been what he's like, you know, say 10 or 15 yards over the middle. One other highlight from practice that I took away today was uh, Gerard Mayo 
getting some serious licks on Rob Gronkowski on a pass over the middle. Gronk caught the pass from Tom Brady and was met right away by number 51. I think that's a great sign, not only because Gronk got up and he was A-OK, -okay, but that uh, Gerard Mayo is not holding back whatsoever. No, I think that was a sort of a sign for the whole defense today. It was a very spirited practice, I thought, the defense. And I think that Mayo play was probably the highlight. You know, it wasn't just Mayo that was excited about it, it was the whole defense. I think that just showed, you know, the, the excitement from the defense, the sort of readiness, and, and definitely a step up from what we saw at the end of last week, where it was sort of a lax musical couple practices. Yeah, and you know what? That's the takeaway the last Friday and, and even today that we're talking about the defense first and then the offense still has some work to do. That's what training camp is for. That'll be a wrap here on Monday. We'll be back here on Tuesday with Christopher Price and then the preseason opens up against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers here at Gillette Stadium on Thursday night. Outside Gillette Stadium, for Ryan Hannibal, I'm Mike Petralia, WEEI.com.